everybody. Um, this is the third video uh, for the Mac 215 Mechanical Engineering Design. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about beam loading. So we cover this topic in uh, Mac 251 quite extensively. Uh, here, we only look at the uh, shaft condition uh, with a, a circular cross section because that's what we are uh, going to uh, have. Uh, when we design a shaft or analyze the, uh, the failure condition for a certain shaft. Um, that's what we, our mechanical engineering design uh, will do. So with a um, multiple uh, force and torque loading on this shaft, you can uh, categorize all this loading into uh, three different situations. The first one is the uh, tension compression. So this is the force along the shaft. So the force vector needs to be aligned with the shaft. Second case is the torsion. Uh, in this case, the force is uh, um, off the center from the shaft. So it's kind of the direction of the force doesn't go through the center of the uh, shaft, so causing kind of a twisting. The third case is the bending. Uh, this is when the force is perpendicular to the shaft. Um, so, and this will cause the, the shaft to uh, have a shear, so you get a shear stress from the bending, and also uh, you get a normal stress from the bending. So that's kind of the most uh, complicated. And in this um, uh, figure over here, if you look at FA, this is off-centered and also uh, the force is perpendicular to the shaft. So this FA by itself will cause bending and torsion um, to this um, shaft. Then if you have any force kind of along the shaft, you have uh, uh, this tension compression as well. So the formulas in the exam is we only provide this calculation for a circular beam. Um, so there are uh, normal stress coming from the tension compression, so very simple, the force over cross-section area. Um, the shear stress coming from the torsion so it's TR over J. I is the radius of the the, um, the the shaft, okay? And this tau is maximum when it's at the edge of the shaft. J is pi d uh, force over thirty two. This is a, depends on the geometry. Uh, this only applies for circular uh, cross section. Uh, for the uh, bending, the, the third case and the most complicated one, it'll cause shear stress. 4V over 3A, and also it'll cause a normal stress, MY over I. Uh, it's a negative sign. Okay, so I is equal to pi D uh, force over um, 64. So let's look at these uh, three cases. Simplest case, you have a normal stress uh, coming from the compression or tension, and this stress is uh, evenly distributed on the cross section. So uh, the stress is equal to the force over the uh, cross-section area. For circular geometry, it's 4p over pi d squared. Um, the second case, the torsion, um, this is not evenly distributed on, on the cross-section. It's largest at ex ex outside and the smallest in the center, which is zero. Okay? So you, you consider twisting something um, the larger the, the radius, um, you will get more um, torsion um, on the surface. Uh, the third case is uh, bending. So bending actually causing two effects. The first one is the normal stress coming from the bending moment. So you, you look at this M, M over here, you, you kind of going to bend this uh, Geometry. So the top of the geometry getting compressed together, the bottom get pulled out, and you have a, a compression at the top and a tension at the bottom. And this is not evenly distributed, as I said. Uh, the center basically you don't have anything because you look at this. Uh, if you compress the top and the toward the bottom, the center it just doesn't change its size. So there's no um, um, no normal stress. And this is a bunch of uh, uh, equation you use to calculate uh, uh, the result. At the same time, there's a 
uh, bending moment is come with the shear um, force. And the shear force will cause a shear stress. Uh, because at the top and the bottom, uh, the shear stress is kind of internally balanced to each other. The top and the bottom, uh, you don't have any external stress there. So the shear stress must be also zero uh, because nothing to balance with it. And if you look at different cross section, uh, particularly we're interested in this circular case, um, <coughs> the largest value is right in the middle, right in the center. In the center over here, uh, which is 4v over 3a. And uh, at the top and the bottom, that's zero. So this is the shear, for, uh, shear force calling the shear stress. Uh, this is a bending moment, this is called the normal stress and the shear stress. So in this case, you can have a look. If you have a, a point on the uh, shaft, uh, if it's at the top, you only have the normal stress from the uh, bending moment, the shear stress is zero. If you write in the middle, the normal stress is zero, but the shear stress gets to the maximum. If you somewhere in between, then you have a both normal and shear stress uh, combined situation. So this comes to the exam question one. You have a, a point A, point B on the shaft, and the shaft simply have three of those uh, conditions um, that applied uh, on it. So you have a P, F, T cause a, a P cause a normal tension. So for any points on the shaft, it will be the same uh, normal stress. So A and B both says the uh, 4P over pi D square, uh, sigma X. So X is because look at this coordinate, X is along the shaft, so the um, stress is along the shaft. Uh, y is going up, Z is going towards us. For torsion, T, uh, because A and B both are on the external surface, so they both have the same kind of value for the shear force. But if you look at the uh, direction for point A, it goes towards z positive Z direction, so you have a TXZ is a positive value. Uh, for point B, the torsion goes, this goes downwards, which is negative to the Y value, so you get a uh, tau xy is equal to negative 16 uh, t pi over pi d uh, cube. Okay, so the same value, but the one is going positive y, uh, positive z, one is negative y. Uh, for the um, force f, um, this force will causing a bending moment and also a shear uh, stress. So if we look at the shear stress, F is coming, the shearing, the, uh, the trying to kind of offsetting the uh, shaft. So the force is in the negative Z direction. Okay? And uh, like I said, this, this shear stress is biggest um, in the middle. So going this way, the middle is this way. That's the middle. This is the top and bottom from the F point of view, okay, so this is the top, this is the bottom, okay, so B is the top, A is the middle, so the middle only has the shear stress, and it's the largest value. The uh, normal stress over here doesn't appear, because that's right in the middle, you do this, uh, the, this B, point of B, will be stretched, uh, on the other side, it will be compressed, but A is right in the middle, so it doesn't have any normal stress. Uh, for point B, the F is uh, acting, have a normal pulling um, away uh, this point B, away in this way, so you have a, a normal stress coming from the bending over here. It's a positive uh, uh, value uh, because it's positive along the X value x direction, b is pulling uh, away from the, that fixture. So you kind of un, under this uh, situation. So for point A, you have uh, one normal stress and two shear stress. For point B, you have uh, two normal stress and one shear stress. So for the normal stress, you add them together. For the shear stress, you add them together. Then 
for both point A and B, uh, you get a, a stress sigma x, and you have a shear stress tau xz or tau xy. So from here, if you uh, listened to my first video uh, from sigma x and tau xy, you'll be able to sort out this principal stress that use maximum shear stress theory, you can uh, find the factor of safety. Uh, for the volume stress, you, once you got all this, uh, you can use the equation provided in the second video to uh, address that, that um, static loading uh, safety factor. So here is an example, very similar. So it's example 5.3 in the textbook. Um, you can see in this case, it only have a F, but this F will causing uh, the shaft, the main shaft is this, this one, main shaft, okay, or causing that to have a twist, also have a bending, um, so you have to consider uh, those bending and the twisting. Okay. So with those two, uh, for the uh, bending, yeah, normal stress is m y over i, so at the bottom is using i over c, but you basically multiply c, so c will be getting away, you get m c over i. Right? c is uh, um, the radius of this um, shaft. Um, so if you have a F force, we don't know, you put that in the calculation, the stress is 142 F for the normal stress. For the shear stress, use the torsion T R over J. Okay, so this is all given, the, the equation here is all given in the exams. And you find a shear stress. So you get normal stress, shear stress, you be able to um, find either the maximum shear stress or volume stress, then you can carry on for the uh, um, safety uh, factor. So this <coughs> this is using distortion energy theory. So um, sigma prime is equal to sigma x square. There's a sigma y square there because sigma y is zero, so it doesn't count here. Oh, sorry, sigma z. Uh, we're looking at in x z plane uh, plus three. Uh, tau zx square. Then put whatever we got numbers from previously in here. We got our volume stress 194.5. Then we compare this with the uh, uh, year stress. Okay, when this two um, is uh, a ratio is equal to how big the F can be. So, um, so this is that uh, that question. Um, we can also use the maximum shear stress method. So you get maximum shear stress uh, from the normal stress and shear stress. Uh, you got this, and and the F can be only three eighty eight. Okay, so you see with the maximum shear stress theory, you get a smaller uh, allowed force because it's more conservative uh, calculation. Okay, so this is about the video 10 exam uh, too. And any other questions, uh, if we require you to uh, derive the normal stress shear stress, um, this is kind of the um, most basic situation you're dealing with. Sometimes it will be slightly more complicated, but you must be able to handle uh, such a, a simple uh, conditions. All right, thank you for the uh, attention. If you have any comments, please leave a few words.